Hello everybody, today we're looking at straight line graphs, some exam style questions. These questions come up every year in the exam, so make sure you pay really close attention to what I'm telling you. Okay, so we're asked to consider the graph of the equation y equals minus 3x plus 2, and you will see that this is in the form y equals mx plus c, uh, which makes it quite easy to work with. So what is the gradient of and the y-intercept of this graph? Well, it's super simple. You just compare it to y equals mx plus c. And you should see that um, for y equals mx plus c, the m is the gradient, the c is the y-intercept. The m is minus 3, the c is 2. Okay? Uh, so just comparing it to y equals mx plus c there. A point, li a point p lies on the straight line. The y coordinate of p is minus 5, find the x coordinate. Okay, so we know that y is minus 5, and we want to find the x coordinate. And we're going to use that uh, to find the x coordinate. And what we do is we take the equation of the line, we substitute the y coordinate in to find the x coordinate. So minus 5 substitutes in as the y, and we're going to rearrange. Uh, so we've got a plus 2 on this side, we're going to move that to the other side by making it minus 2. Okay, so minus 5 minus 2 is minus 7, and we've got minus 7 equals minus 3x. Okay, we get rid of the times by minus 3 by dividing by minus 3. And minus 7 divided by 3 is 7 thirds, and that is the final answer. Okay, so that is just substituting in the y coordinate, rearranging algebraically, and getting the x coordinate. Okay, the next one, which of the following coordinates lies on the line? Uh, so, uh, 2, minus 4, and minus 1, 6, uh, lying on y equals minus 3x plus 2. Okay, so we take the x equals 2, y equals minus 4, and again we're going to substitute those in and see if it works. So here we've substituted the minus 4 is y, the x is 2. Minus 4 equals minus 6 plus 2. Minus 6 plus 2 is indeed minus 4, so this does work. And so the fact that these coordinates do work in this equation means that it does lie on that graph. Whereas this other one, x equals minus 1, y equals 6. Uh, let's look at this. So we substitute it in. Uh, 6 equals minus 3 times minus 1 plus 2. 3 plus minus 3 times minus 1 is plus 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. So that means that 6 is equal to 5. And that doesn't make any sense at all. So that must mean that this coordinate does not work in this equation, and therefore it is not on that line. It must be line, uh, must be a point off the line. Okay, next one, question D. Write the equation of the line parallel to y equals minus 3x plus 2. Um, Okay, and this can be, uh, so we just choose any line we want here. And there's many, many ones we can choose. All, the only important thing is for it to be parallel, it needs to have the same gradient. So the gradient of this line is minus 3, as we already said. Uh, so there are several other uh, lines with that, well, many, many, many other lines with that uh, gradient. Y equals minus 3x plus 6. Y equals minus 3x. Y equals minus 3x plus 2. Y equals minus 3x plus 1.6. So any line that has minus 3 as a gradient will be parallel to this line. Okay. Now it says, uh, sketch a graph of y equals minus 3x plus 2. Okay, and what we're going to do, uh, we could do this with a table of values, as I showed in my plotting straight line graphs uh, video, but a quicker way would just be to start from the y-intercept and then go up and down the gradient. So we're going to start from the y-intercept, which is 2, here, and if we go uh, from there, we go across and down the gradient. The gradient is minus 3. So if we go across one square, we're going to go down 3 squares, because the gradient is minus 3. Go, minus 3 means if you go down, across one, you go down minus 3. Let's do that again, so uh, we can go across one and down minus 3. And you should see that these points here that we're plotting that are going to uh, have a gradient of minus 3 are making a straight line. So all you need to do is start from the y-intercept and then go across and down the gradient. 
and we can draw the straight line through those points there like that. And that's a perfect sketch, actually, of line y equals minus 3x plus 2. If you prefer, you can do it with a table of values. Okay, example 2. Line 1 passes through the points 1, 3 and 4 minus 1. Line 2 has the equation 0 equals 3x minus 4y plus 20. So that these uh, line 1 and line 2 are perpendicular. Okay, so what we have to do is find the gradient of line 1 and find the uh, gradient of line 2 and see if they're perpendicular. Line 2 is not y equals mx plus c yet, but what we'll do is we'll rearrange that eventually and get it in the form y equals mx plus c. And you need to remember the rule for perpendicular lines. Um, perpendicular just means they are right angles to each other. It's like the opposite of parallel. And if you multiply the two gradients of the lines together, you will get minus 1. So that's a rule for um, perpendicular lines. Show that these um, line 1 and line 2 are perpendicular. Okay, so we start with line 1 and line, uh, line 1. And we're going to find the gradient of line 1. Uh, and we're going to use the, this equation. The gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we're just going to substitute those numbers in. Like that. Minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So you will get minus 4 over 3. And that is the gradient of line 1. Okay. The gradient of line 2 we're going to find by rearranging the equation. We're going to add 4y to both sides. So just move that 4y to the other side. I want it in the form y equals mx plus c. So that means I need to get rid of the 4. I'm going to divide by 4. And I get uh, something like this. Which is the same as this. So I've divided everything in by 4. This now looks a lot closer to y equals mx plus c. And what I can do is I can write it like this. y equals 3 quarters x plus 5. The gradient of line 2 is 3 quarters, because that's the number in front of the x, when you write it in the form y equals mx plus c. OK, let's multiply the two gradients together and see if we get minus 1. So minus 4 thirds times 3 quarters will be minus 1. You can try that on your calculator, but it does work. And that's all we have to show. We have to find the two gradients and then multiply them together, and we will get minus 1. And we can just say as required and give it a tick, because we have completed the uh, question. When it says to show that, once you get uh, to the end and you've shown that it works, you can just write as required. It's always good. A little phrase to write at the end to show that you've finished. Okay, the final example, example 3. Line L passes through the points 0, 1 and 10, 6. Find the equation of a line perpendicular to L which passes through point 4, minus 5. Okay, so let's do a quick sketch of that. I've just drawn some basic axes here. And we can put on the point 0, 1. 10, 6 as well, and connect them with a straight line. You can also draw the point 4 minus 5 over here, and we're going to do a line perpendicular to it, like that. It will be perpendicular, which means it'll be a right angle, so I'm just going to draw a right angle uh, as well. Uh, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the gradient of the, uh, the equation of the red line. What we're going to do is find the gradient of the blue line. Uh, once we know that uh, gradient, we're going to use that to find the, the gradient of a perpendicular line. Once we have that gradient, all we need to do is find the plus C for the red line, and we will have finished. Okay, so uh, we're going to find the gradient of a blue line uh, by substituting the uh, coordinates 0, 1, 10, 6. And we get 6 minus 1, five minus, uh, 10 minus 0 is 5 tenths which is just the same as one half. So the gradient of the blue line is uh, one. Now we use our rule for perpendicular lines, m1 times m2 is minus one. So we know that a half times uh, the second gradient will be minus one. Okay, and uh, can you figure out what m2 will be here? Well, um, to rearrange this, all you do is the opposite of halving something. 
and the opposite of halving something is times in by 2. So you multiply both sides by 2, and you'll get m2 is minus 2. The gradient of the red line is minus 2. Okay. So we have the gradient. Let's use that to find the plus c now. We substitute in the gradient of minus 2. And we also know that um, the um, red line uh, goes to the point 4 minus 5, which is x equals 4, y equals minus 5. Substitute those numbers in. So x equals 4, y is minus uh, 5. Minus 2 times 4 is minus 8. Minus, four, uh, minus 5 equals minus 8 plus c. Can you see what plus c is? You'll add, minus eight, uh, add 8 to both sides. And you get c is equal to 3. Okay. So the y-intercept of this line is 3. We know the equation of the line is y equals minus 2x plus 3. Just to repeat what I did there, because this is a really common exam question. And it's a bit tricky at times. We find the gradient of the first line. And then we use that gradient to find a perpendicular gradient using our rule for perpendicular lines. Once we've got the perpendicular gradient, we write y equals mx plus c, substitute in the m. And then we use the x coordinate and the y coordinate and the gradient to solve for the c. We find the c and then we can write the final answer, y equals minus 2x plus 3. Okay. Right, uh, so... You might want to rewatch the video one more time just to make sure you understand every part of this video. Uh, but if you're ready, you can watch, uh, you can try these exam questions yourself. Uh, so uh, some of these are tricky questions. You really think about them before you um, do them. Read them carefully and see if you can get it right. Uh, question 4C is a challenge question. Um, I... Just to give you a hint, you will need to use simultaneous equations to solve that one. Okay, thank you. Um, so pause the video, take five to ten minutes, uh, and see if you can get uh, some answers yourself. Good luck. I'll reveal the answers in three, two, one. Okay, did you get it right? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this week's video from Advanced Maths. Please remember we have many, many videos coming every week, so remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos that will help you with your exams. Again, thank you for watching um, and good luck in your exams.